Is there a secret to sustainable high performance? What is the foundation for optimal learning? And how can we have deeper, more meaningful relationships with our friends and our loved ones? These are three distinctly different questions in three different areas, so it may surprise you to discover that the answer to all three is the same. To resolve this inner struggle, we often look to the outside. We think we need to fix ourselves and change our behavior. But I found that there is a different approach. Last year, last March, I interviewed Roger Federer. Now, at that time, Roger had just won the Australian Open, winning his 19th Grand Slam championship. This is a remarkable feat. When I sat down with him, I asked him simply, how did you do it? And what he told me was that when he played his absolute best tennis, he focused exclusively on the tennis ball. The ability to control our attention determines how we'll perform any task. Now, what is focus? Before I give you an explanation, what I'd like to do is give you a first-hand experience of it. That's why I have the props. So in tennis, an exercise that helps tennis players track the ball better has been called, in fact, the greatest exercise ever created for tennis. Whenever the ball bounces on the ground, you say bounce. Whenever the ball bounces on my racket, you say hit. Can you do that? Do you need me to repeat the instruction? OK. It seems pretty simple. Let's see how you do. Are you ready? OK. Ready? Okay, now raise your, you guys did pretty well. Raise your hand if you made a mistake. Normally what happens is there's a pattern there. In tennis, if you start paying attention to the ball, instead of worrying about how to hit it, what happens is you get more information about the spin, speed, and direction of the ball, which allows you to move more effectively, have better position and footwork, more solid contact, all of which allows you to have a better chance of directing the ball where you'd like it to go. When we play, we have a process of playing in which we're thinking too much or worried. Then when we're focused, we can play at our best. It reduces the self-interference. Now, this isn't just true for tennis or sport. It's also true in business and in organizations. Several years ago, I worked with the CEO of a national restaurant chain. When I started working with them, they had 44 different metrics that they had identified as critical. This is too many for the brain to handle. Over the course of the next two years, they got it down to four. Several of the regional leaders decided to focus on just one variable, which they found the most important. Now, the metric used for that was manager visits to the table. So just like in tennis, the ball is the most important thing. When the restaurant business, the customer is the most important thing. Lastly, in the financial crisis of 2008, there was only one large bank that did not take any money from the U.S. government, U.S. Bank. A friend of mine, Joseph Odding, who became vice chairman, um, I asked him, how did you do it? How is this possible when everyone else made the mistake of investing in subprime mortgages. He said, you know, actually, it was really simple. I brought the senior leadership team in. 
I told them that these were the five critical variables that were crucial for our success and that we would focus on them. Then I asked Joe, what did you do next? He said, you know, what I, I just played a lot of golf. <laughs> and it sounds funny, but actually this is how powerful this simple tool is. But as I mentioned, focus is not just important for performance. It's also critical for learning. I remember some years ago, a man came to me wanting to improve his back end. When I tossed him a couple of balls, I asked him to simply be aware of where the racket was relative to his shoulder on the backswing. But on the fourth ball, suddenly something happened and he exclaimed, Oh, I do take the racket back too high. It's above my shoulder. So there is a distinct difference between knowing something cognitively and knowing something in our own direct experience. In 2001, I was invited to work with the New York Yankee Player Development Group. I was introduced and I shared with them that I really wanted this to be a conversation and an inquiry and that they could ask questions anytime they wanted. Immediately, a hand shot up, and one of the coaches asked, Mr. Brawley, with all due respect, what can you, as a former tennis pro, teach us about baseball? And I said, you know, I can't teach you much about baseball. I haven't played baseball since I was 10 years old. But let me ask you a question. What is the single most important skill needed to be an extraordinary hitter, much like in tennis, they said reading the pitch was the most important skill. I said, great, the same is true in tennis. I've developed a number of mindful awareness-based exercises that can really help with reading the pitch. And the coach who asked the question, his jaw literally dropped. Because the answer was never. I don't know much about uh, baseball technique, but I have learned some innovative coaching techniques that might prove very helpful. Now, in the course of the next six months, we identified other critical variables that were important for hitting and pitching, and by the end of the season, they went from being ranked 23 as a group to number one. My number one recommendation would be to meditate that in the course of meditating, you get to practice your focus and you get to practice noticing what comes up in you in the present moment. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. <laughs>